welcome my friend and colleague, B.L. Hoffman. Hi, guys. Thank you all for coming. I, I'm really excited that this many people uh, have, have turned out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my slides with you, and um, we will leave time for questions. And um, this is not being recorded. We are not going to send out the video, but I will be sending you information and uh, links and, and suggestions after the fact. Karen will send those your way. So um, if you're ready, we can get started. Let me share my screen and uh, we'll begin. And here we go. Okay, and we're going to give it a slideshow view. Okay, so there are many problems that nonfiction authors are facing, but there are three of them that, hey, could everybody please mute themselves? I, I hear some background noise. Um, there, are, there are three that are um, really major. BL, you're muted. Oh, hold on a second. I was trying to mute. Um, I'm, oh, here I am. There you go. There you Sorry go. about that. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> Let me start again. There are so many things that we could talk about in AI and so many issues that authors face, but um, I'm going to talk about three of the top ones and demonstrate how you can use them. I, I will actually demonstrate the process of using chat GPT. And we'll save time for questions, and um, I, I'm just going to go right into it. So, um, you know, I just want you to think about this as an opportunity. It's it, it's a little frightening, I suppose. It scares me sometimes, but um, it's so much fun, and there's so much to learn. And so here we go. And why isn't my slide moving? Oh, come on. <laughs> why isn't my slide moving? Okay. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so you know, I want you to think about this. Like, if AI could help you turn your nonfiction book into a bestseller, actually, it can. So we're going to talk about that. And what it's really going to do to help you is take over the tedious tasks of research and, um, you know, outlining and things that are really tasks that take a long time. They take a lot less time when you do them with AI. Why is this not? Paul Cheney, who's here today. Um, and, you know, basically, it's okay if you use it as a tool, because that's what AI is, it's a tool. Don't use it to create final content. Uh, one of the things that AI does that I dislike about it intensely, and that is accepted widely, is it creates content that's good enough. People say, yeah, it's good enough, you know. Uh, people are going to lose their jobs over uh, content that's not good enough uh, being produced instead of having creativity. So. Um, good enough's not good enough for me, and it shouldn't be good enough for you either, and I'm sure it's not. Um, but there are many things AI can't do, so let's also discuss those. It has no way to provide insights. It has no way to give your perspective. It doesn't have your emotional intelligence. It, uh, it doesn't have any original ideas. It has an average of all the ideas that it's trained on. It's a large language model, and it is trained on information, which includes words and images and podcasts and a whole lot of other things. But in the end effect, it can't take those and make them into original ideas. Um, it can't grapple with the ethical aspect of it. It can't make your value-based decisions. and you know, good enough copy, in my opinion, is the enemy. So um, that's just my opinion. Come on, thing. <laughs> so, you know, let's think about it as an opportunity and let's dig into how we're going to take advantage of it. Um, it. It's not a replacement. It's a tool that can enhance and empower and amplify, but it can't 
it can't take over the writing part of it. And I'm sure you wouldn't want it to anyway. That's the fun part. One thing I'd like you to notice about this image, which I made with AI, is I put in the title and it got the first line right, but look what it did to the second line. Right? It hallucinates. That is one of the things that it does. So um, a one sentence letter was signed by 350 AI scientists and executives, and they were warning against global pandemics and nuclear war that, that AI could be involved with. Um, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> and, and however, if you want to take a look at what uh, Sundar Pichai, who's the CEO of Google says, he says that AI is more profound than electricity or anything that, or fire that anything we've done in the past. And many people say this is our fourth industrial revolution. Uh, but by integrating into uh, AI into your process, you get to focus more on the creative aspect, and that's where you guys shine, I'm sure. So, you know, uh, you can use it to streamline. There you can see on the left, like, how it screwed up my title. I, I, I don't know how it did that, but it does that. You'll see in every slide that has copy in it, it has changed it. Um, anyway, um, you can streamline the writing process with it. And you can um, enhance the outline, the you know, the flow of your content. Um, so let's talk about the top three problems that AI can can solve. And um, by the way, in this case, I asked it to uh, make a woman with curly blonde hair, and in this case, it did it. <laughs> so the number one thing that AI is helpful with is researching and writing and out researching and outlining your um, your book. So I will demonstrate that for you. So I want to emphasize that research and not writing is the number one thing that you have to think about. If you don't have research, you can't possibly have good writing because you have to be able in a nonfiction book to make sure what you're saying is true which means that you have to vet, as you should have been doing, as we all, us smart people have been doing all along, <laughs> what we need to do is we need to vet every, every source that it gives us, everything that it says, you need to make sure that it's true. And I generally wanna do that with three reliable sources. Um, it, it can perform the tasks that would take you hours, maybe days, in a matter of seconds when it comes to research and outlining, uh, but only if you know how. And the know-how part is kind of complicated. Um, but with good prompts, it can sift through immense amounts of information and, and online data and um, you know give that information to you in a cohesive form in a matter of seconds. So you're able then to structure your information into a coherent outline. It will do that for you. And, and you can make sure that your book has a logical flow. And you can actually ask it, you know, do you consider the flow of my work to be logical? And it will give you answers. Um, so, um, you know, by being able to use the method of using AI to streamline the outlining, you can go on to writing your book. So um, it runs on text prompts. And here I want to demonstrate how AI itself, I'm going to use what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I would put an actual prompt into chat GPT. This particular one is going to ask it to help me with research for a book that, let's say, I am writing. So I'm going to share my screen so that you will be able to see me actually doing a prompt and see chat GPT actually answering it. So here is my message to chat GPT. Okay, here we go. I'm asking it to do research. I want it to cite sources and I just click this button and it is going to go and look for information and then provide it to us in a matter of seconds, really. It's, it's quite remarkable exactly how fast it goes. And of course, I will probably have to ask it additional questions because it does not always give you the answer that you want on the first go around. For example, many times I ask it to include URLs and then it doesn't do that. So my second request, which is called chain prompting. So I'm going to tell it 
I need the URLs for the sources on the list. And boom, it'll do it. And now, as you can see, it's giving me the URLs. This is the URL right here. This URL right here. And just for fun, here's a representation of the sources chat GPT used in order to craft its answer. So uh, let's see if I can get it to move. Wait a minute, you stop talking. The will prompt into okay. GPT. Uh, we're having technical difficulties. Um, and the second thing that it can do is it can uh, analyze mentor text. So let's talk a little bit about mentor text and what it is. And um, basically, it can include books, articles by best selling authors, even Pulitzer Prize winning authors. It can include videos, it can include social posts, song lyrics. Oh, here we go, we're ready. <laughs> uh, here's, here's how it's going to find some of those for us. Oh, and by the way, just so you know, um, my voice was synthesized by AI in the previous video. Okay, we're going to ask it this about. This time, I am asking ChatGPT to give me a sentence structure from some of the best-selling books. Let's see if it can do it. Go to ChatGPT and put in my prompt. Let's see what it comes up with. I asked it for information about a specific book because you can't ask it to parse an entire list. You have to keep your prompts to a fairly reasonable size of what you are asking. And just for fun, this is what ChatGPT had to say about Michael Gerber's The E-Myth Revisited, Readability and Accessibility, Engaging and Relatable Content, and persuasive and motivational writing style. So um, again, that was my synthesized voice. This time I get away. Asking chat. This is very frustrating. Sorry about this. To okay. So um, what what happens there is that, and and in its answer, which probably went by a little too quickly for you to read it, it said, I can't analyze it unless you give me actual content from it. So how you could do that is you are able to take a portion of a book, or for that matter, a whole book, and turn it into a PDF. You're able to upload the PDF and then ask it to analyze the content in the PDF for a variety of um, of qualities, you can ask, you know, what about the sentence structure is likely to make this more readable. You can ask it um, what about the chapter outline is something that might have contributed to the success. Anything that you can think of that you could learn from other best-selling copy, you can ask Chat GPT. But it told me that in this case, there wasn't a lot written about it. And so it was a good idea to go out and read reviews and go to its website if it had one to find the information. But what I really could have done is gone to the book and copied some of the content and said, what do you think about this? So mentor text is something that um, people don't really use AI for as much as I think they could. And, uh, you know, it gives you the information and it gives you so many specifics about uh, the content that you're looking at. And by the way, I just should say that um, the reason I'm using chat GP4 uh, which is a $20 a month subscription, unless you have a team subscription, which just came out yesterday. Uh, it, it has DAL-E, which is DAL-E3, which is for making images. It can search the web now. It can make your own private um, GPTs, and we'll cover that in the next webinar. Um, I'm using it because it's still the most popular. There are scores and scores of uh, platforms that you can use, but this is the one that is at this point in time still the leader. And, and um, so, you know, you're, you're also able to find out 
what your audience is reading and um, and create personas for them, which is really something that used to be unbelievably difficult. <laughs> um, it'll give you bulleted points. It'll summarize an astounding amount of data, and I will demonstrate exactly how it does that. But again, I have to say it again, you got to vet your, your data uh, and make sure. So, okay, this is how it creates a persona. I am going to show you how ChatGPT can create a persona representing your possible readers. I think that this is a pretty spectacular thing that it is able to demonstrate. We are here in ChatGPT, and I am going to put in my prompt. It's a long one. As you can see, ChatGPT is providing me with a detailed description of potential readers for my nonfiction book, something that can be useful for me both in writing and marketing my book. And then you can ask it more questions. You can ask it, uh, what podcasts might this person uh, read, uh, what, listen to, what videos, what social networks are they on? Um, you know, but again, you have to argue with it. You have to realize that it makes mistakes and that uh, if you are not an expert at writing prompts, then you're more likely to get information that's um, not complete. The most important thing to know about prompts is to tell it, first of all, uh, who you are. I am a digital marketer and I am writing a book about people who started businesses over the age of 50. I want to have a persona for the people who might want to read my book. That would all be part of my prompt and I would say I would like to know what books they read, I would like to know uh, their job titles, uh, include uh, books, videos, articles, social networks, as much information as I want can go into that prompt. And the more that I ask for, the more that I will get back, which is really remarkable considering how you used to have to create prompts. So, you know, you have to know that it makes mistakes. It doesn't have feelings. You don't have to be nice to it. And, you know, maybe it'll have feelings next week, but right now it doesn't have them. And um, that's the scary part. <laughs> but um, sometimes it tells you things that are absolutely ridiculous. And um, if it's a subject you're not familiar with, you may not know that, which is why you really have to check what it's telling you. Um, but if your prompt is really clear and really detailed, you're going to get less superficial answers. But, um, you know, it's it's important for you to know that it hallucinates. And so here are some of the things I tell it. Um, you know, I, it gave me some information, but it didn't tell me everything I wanted. So I'm going to say I asked you for specific details on whatever, and you gave me superficial content. Try again. Or I might say the content you gave me really stinks. It's not deep enough. Try again. And and it the first thing it'll say is, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me try again. Um, and I tell it, you know, not good enough. Rewrite your answer and include uh, URLs and sources. Give me five bulleted points in your answer. Um, and I also find that after it gives me an answer, uh, it is it is really helpful if you do some really simple things. One of them is it gives you an answer and you just say why. And it will give you uh, more information. You keep on saying why, and by the time you get to the third or fourth response to your why, you have some pretty wonderful detail in your response. I also will tell it, go deeper, and, and I may tell it that repeatedly. I will always tell it, be more specific, and um, sometimes I'll just you know say, no, exclamation, that's wrong. Uh, rethink what you responded with. So whatever makes you happy when you're yelling at it, that's what you should say. But these are some of the things I say. Um, if you keep learning about AI, um, pretty soon this could be you. And I want you again to look at the image, OK? I, I want to see you guys signing your books in Barnes & Noble. But I, I asked for a photograph of a young woman with tiny round glasses, which she is not wearing. And I said this was the title of her book. and it inexplicably added 
extra letters, who knows why, but it always does that. One of the things that has improved about uh, AI imaging is that it's gotten better at making hands, but you might notice she doesn't really have any knuckles, and I don't know what the thing is on her wrist. It, it looks painful, whatever it is. And, you know, it, it does things like that, and guess what? Next week it won't, or maybe tomorrow. I mean, you, you really cannot... Um, imagine the pace at which this is moving forward. It, it's really kind of incredible and fun. That's what makes it fun. Um, so we're going to do a much deeper dive on the 23rd. And uh, if you make a small investment for a major uh, lesson in your writing career, I think you'll uh, find that you will uh, walk away. Uh, you can always call yourself an expert after that. Um, and now I want you to also look at the image here. I asked it to make me um, a Marge Simpson uh, image, and that's completely illegal. And um, you could be sued for doing that unless that is in the, um, unless it's not copyrighted anymore, but I think it is. And so you could get into some trouble for using Marge, Marge Simpson actual Marge Simpson. Um, but anyhow, I want to take time for questions, and I want to uh, let you know how to get in touch with me. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen Great. and let Karen do a little talking here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you want to ask a question, just um, raise your hand digitally. I saw there were some questions in the chat. Are there already? Um, Stephanie, hi. hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Should we be concerned about uploading our copyrighted content? Could someone else access that? Yes, you should be concerned about it. There are two points of view about it. Um, one is that you want your content to be part of the large language model because it will help you get visibility. Um, the other is that you can now create your own GPT, and this is what the future really is going to be. Uh, JP Morgan was the first company to do it, where they took all of their company information, all the reports, all the data, all the everything, and they put it into their own GPT. And I believe there's a new setting in chat GPT. Uh, maybe somebody can tell me that says, don't track my data. But in my opinion, you want to be found. Um, should you worry about it? Yes, you should. And, and you know, if you're writing a book, um, you you might want legal advice on that. And um, that is one of the caveats right now. But it's not something I worry about. I mean, we don't have any privacy in this world. And, you know, pe people are going to do what they're going to do. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, because I'm not sure there's really an answer to it. So uh, Julie Nixon wrote, the paid version is the way to go so we can turn off training history and our work doesn't become available to other people using the model. So, Correct. Julie, do you, do you want to elaborate on that at all? Are you there? I don't know. You have to unmute yourself if you do. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. There you are. I see you. No, we can't hear you. Okay, okay, next. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you, that there are ways to avoid having your content be included in the uh, overall content. But nonetheless, um, you know, a lot of it is unavoidable. Right. Avon? Hi, BL. Um, so I would be very wary of the copyright thing. I agree with BL. You want your content found. You want to be known for that content, but some of the content you have might be worth copywriting and not necessarily sharing. So you need to think about that. But what I wanted to ask BL is this is really fabulous. Um, and I'm definitely signing up for, for the next, um, the, the paid one. But so have you learned this by trial and error? I have learned it by um, studying absolutely everything I could read, get my hands on. I belong to a few different Slack groups that discuss AI and uh, that, that help each other to learn it. Um, Scott and Paul are in some of those groups. And um, I, I am, I'm a lifelong learner. I, I'm just constantly, I eat information. That's what I have for breakfast. So I've been studying now for uh, the past year. And 
I'm astounded. You know, there's something every day that makes me go, oh, my God, really? You can do that? You know, or, oh, that's terrible. But every day there's something new to learn. And I'm going to give you a list of newsletters that I read that help me to keep up. Uh, and and um, I think they'll help you as well. And most of them are quick. You know, they're five minutes, three minute reads, but they're daily and they suggest tools. And, and some are paid, but most are free. And I, I will give you the ones that I never miss. And um, let me ask you, Mark, what's your question? Oh, we had CJ first. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see CJ. Um, can you put, can someone drop a link, maybe Karina, to the uh, January 23rd event? So I can right take here. a look. Done. CJ. Thank you. Thank well, you. If you're, as long as you're doing this, uh, I'll announce it now. To the first five people who register, so it's 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 going in at 197, but for the first five people who register and put in the code AI ready, it's $97. Okay, do you, CJ, do you see the link? Got it. Great. I'm I'm not 100% sure it's going to fit in an hour. It might be a little longer. <laughs> I think it's got to be a little longer. Yeah. yeah. Training, There's so much to tell. Yeah. To, you Training know. workshop um, goes into much more detail. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to do it because it's, um, I need to learn this. So. If it says 197, how do we get the It right? retails at 197 if you register and put in the code AI ready. Okay. It goes to 97 for the first five people. Thank you. There's one more thing I do want to do after I answer questions, and that's I actually want to show you a live demo of um, ChatGPT because if there are people here who are beginners, it's kind of cool to just see how, how you do it um, in person. Okay, Great. next. Mark, Mark is next. Hi there. That video was really fun, and it raised a whole question in the whole video world, too. Like you could do maybe a book on tape or book on video, you could record your video, but I wanted to know um, what program you use, how long did it take it to train on your voice? Like, did you have to speak into it for like an hour and then it trained your voice? Yeah, and what program was it? And then do you just upload a script and it pops out the video or how does it work? Um, Scott Scowcroft helped me with it. So Scott, can you answer that oh. question? Well, okay, hi everyone. Um... I assume, I assume that you can hear me. I uh, BL actually produced the the entire insert for each of them, and then I used my editing program to zoom in and zoom out and those sorts of things. But it was entirely BL, except for there was some area that needed a little extra commentary. And there is a program or a service out there called Eleven Labs, and it is phenomenal in terms of cloning a person's voice. Uh, you upload five minutes of high quality audio and then type in what you want that person, in this case, be able to say. And sometimes you have to play with it a bit, but other times it just nails it right off the bat. So that's just, you know, part of the leading edge of artificial intelligence. So a little last as to one, like you had text, you said five minutes of audio up and plug it into this thing and it came back with that video? It didn't come up with the video. The, the, the video was actually something that BL recorded and then I went into Premiere Pro, which is an editing uh, software. And then uh, I just edited the old fashioned way. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then the cloning was mostly the AI part of the editing. Well, actually another part of it, there's another program called Adobe Speech Enhancer, which improves audio. So even though BL's audio was pretty good, I ran it through there as well. But those are two invaluable uh, editing, um, uh, AI assisted editing services that are out there. I will include those links in the follow-up uh, content. And um, gee, there was something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> next question. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. What's our next one? Oh, Julie Kerr, sorry. Oh, actually, I was just saying that I, it's not really a question, it was more a comment that I, I also tried the code 
and um, obviously I wasn't in the first five because by the time I'd fiddled around, um, it didn't work. it'd already gone to the, to, when it came out to the full price, but there you go. Some people must have been very, very quick. Very fast. <laughs> very fast. So one of the things that, that voice cloning can do, uh, Mark Schaefer, who's one of the greatest marketers on this planet, uh, told us the other day that he used voice cloning to do his entire audio book. And um, that is mind blowing. He did not hire a voice actor. He did not. Uh, he did not have to do all the tedious stuff that you would normally have to do. He cloned his voice. He uploaded the content, and it and it's reading it. And it will translate it into multiple different languages, which is mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. Any other questions? If not, I will show you um, a, a live version of ChatGPT. Um, Spencer said to tackle the Scott suggestion of a Len Lab, there's also a tool called Hey Gen for video. Um, soon they are adding personalization, um, and he added a link. So thank you, Spencer. Oh, and guys, uh, if you want, you know, if you click on the three little dots at the bottom of the chat, it will save the chat so that you'll have the links right. um, after after this. Um, let me just show you a quick live demonstration of um, using ChatGPT. Let me just go there and open ChatGPT so that we can be there. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay, share screen, ChatGPT. I'm going to. Okay, so when you get to ChatGPT, these are all your options. And um, so I went right directly to ChatGPT4, which is, by the way, what we're using. But included with this subscription is DAL E3, which is for um, uh, making images. And um, so, I, as I said, there are so many different platforms for doing these things. And when we do the next one, I will share several of them with you. But okay, so I'm just going to ask it, um, can you tell me uh, three top newsletters about AI that I should subscribe to. Okay, and then you just click this little button here. And here we go. I mean, if you tried to find those in Google, you'd still be doing it. Uh, it's still looking. <laughs> What are you going to do? Give me more than three, right? No. Okay. So those um, actually are uh, three that I don't read. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I bet they're good, and I will check them out, you know? Uh, anyway, that's how it works. And um, if we have time, I can show you uh, my personal chat GPT that I made. It's called Dance Buddy. And... Um, we have time. We have time. Okay, so you can ask it. I'm a swing dancer, and you can ask it anything you want to know about swing. I have put this information in there, and it also has gone out, and it has made some. So this is my bot, and um, tell me some top films that feature swing dancing with links okay and i mean this is really obscure kind of stuff a film you know that that it's finding um the way the swing dance revolution started was after a gap commercial in which um people were dancing swing back in the early 90s um but anyhow this is this is what it will do because i trained it to do all of this and so it, it has uh, there are many questions that are already in there but if they're not in there it'll go out and look for them um i'm just looking um now you're able to go and look at the gpts that other people made and it keeps it keeps your um your searches but i highly recommend that you download them 
and uh, and keep them because I don't know how long it is till they disappear, but I think it's 30 days. And um, if if you have other questions, I'd be glad to answer. Um, I know that this is a lot of information, and uh, that's why we decided to keep it to three things. Um, there are a thousand things that we can talk about, and and I'm sure there are a thousand questions you might have. Julie, you have another question? Yeah, thanks. This is really great information. Um, how do you or where do you learn how to create your own chat GPT? Chat GPT. Uh, there are videos, and um, uh, that's really how I learned. <laughs> um, everything's on YouTube, and um, it, it, there is an explanation on Chat GPT of how to do it. Uh, they they have they have information that gives you step by step directions. It's it's something that you could use for all of your book research. You don't have to make it public. You can make it private, and um, it's it's something that is definitely the future. And this week, earlier this week, ChatGPT opened a store where these can be sold. And um, so you might even make money on the one that you create. But, you know, that didn't exist last week. So um, what's going to exist next week uh, beats me. I, I don't think I can answer that without a crystal ball. And, you know, I, I think that what is going to happen, I mean, we have to consider the fact that back in 1998, when Google launched Search, you had to know Boolean logic to do a search. Um, and now you still have to know Boolean logic, only it's behind the screen. So now you're able to speak in plain English because the algorithms have trained it to understand that. The same thing, the same kind of, uh, there's AI, let's see, um, there's AI on your phone, there's AI in every shopping site you go to, there's AI, you use AI all day long, but it's in the background. And in my opinion, what's going to happen is all these thousands of startups are going to consolidate as they always do into big tech owning them, which in some cases, especially if it's Google and we really loved something, they'll build it up and then go, okay, it's going away tomorrow, um, the way they did with uh, with our book, uh, what was that called, um, where you could keep all your links. And by the way, now there's a wonderful free AI site called Notion, and Notion is my online brain. Um, I think it's notion.io, I'll have to look that well you can check that but um you can put in you can do everything in there and i use it to keep the articles that i want to reference you can annotate them you can put them in folders you can uh, create searches in there there's nothing you can't do there's a free and a paid version the free version works fine for me i highly recommend notion i don't know how anybody can live without it um terry you have a question you have to unmute. Yeah, yeah, I did. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for sharing all your information. Appreciate that. Um, you mentioned you had your own personal uh, chat GPT. I'm just trying to understand the difference by having your own personal chat GPT and the normal, the regular chat GPT, okay, that everyone can use. Um, can you say more? What's the, what's the advantage of, of having your own chat GPT? Uh, is, is it your teaching of things, or that only you going to be able to to, to access? Or could you say you can choose thing? not to make your personal one public? So that is the difference. If you're writing a book and you want to keep your copyrighted information, or you want to be able to copyright your information, that would be one way to, you know, keep your information. You you train it um, by by adding more and more information but that that is i understand it and and it could be more complicated than that but that's my very basic simple understanding of of the difference oh, oh okay thank you okay anybody else no. thank you guys i hope this has been helpful i i would really like to know uh what you all thought and whether um you know whether you you feel that i covered uh, stuff that's going to actually apply to your writing career because that was the point. So right. I'll let Karen take it from tell here. Us, tell us about what um, what you're going to be creating to send out your document. Okay, what I'm going to send you is um, I'm going to send you newsletters that I recommend, a couple of websites that I recommend, and um, 
uh, what else am I sending you? Um, basically, that's it. I'm going to send you some links. I'm going to send you some suggested reading, um, and um, and that and that will come to you from Karen, actually. Great, Laura. Hi. Unmute hi. yourself. Hi, Karen. Hi, nice. Laura. Hi. Nice to see you guys. See. Um, question. I haven't gone to chat GP4 yet. Have you noticed a big difference between 3.5 and 4? Yeah, I think it's faster. Um, I think it might be somewhat more thorough. Um, sure, uh, chat GPT-5 is coming. You know, uh, there's no way to keep up. Uh, I was asking people in one of the slacks that I'm in, uh, AI Marketers Guild, I was asking them, I'm doing a presentation. And and things change every day. How do I know where to stop? <laughs> and they, and they said, everybody said the same thing. They said, just stop. And, you know, when you do the next one, you'll have the next information. But, I mean, that that's the overwhelming thing about preparing for something like this or or just, you know, keeping it all straight is that it, it is changing, which is why I read the newsletters, which is why I belong to various slacks. It's, you know, discords. Um, you know, if you want to learn, for example, uh, Mid Journey, which is a way of, of creating unbelievably beautiful artwork, is there's a Discord, and you have to join the Discord, and you have to learn from the Discord how to do prompts, and then people will show you. And the bottom line is you can spend your whole day learning about this, or you can come back, and I'll teach you more. There you go. <laughs> come Fair back enough. for training, everybody. Pardon? So. Come back. I was saying, come back for the training. Um, it'll be extremely informative. I'm going to put it one more. So this is an overview. The next one is going to be a deeper dive. And um, I, I'm just excited that this many people are are interested in learning this and um you know a lot of people are afraid and a lot of people are overwhelmed i worked for a graphic design firm when desktop printing came out and everybody said oh designers are over you know we're not going to need them anymore well they're still here the good ones and it's going to be the same with ai ai is not going to take your job but someone who knows how to use it probably will and you you know you you have no choice but to learn about this in the end effect because otherwise you seriously will be left behind and that's very frightening especially if you work in marketing <laughs> gotcha cherry another question uh yes i have another question um no there are several other ais out there uh is it only chat gpt you use or have you used any other ai no, that's what I was saying, that there are multiple platforms, and I will go through uh, several of them in the next training. But the reason I chose to use ChatGPT for demonstration is it is still the biggest, it is still the most uh, well-known, and, and it has an awful lot of functionality that improves on a regular basis. And what they just did this week is really quite interesting. They introduced Teams, so it's 20... $5 a person, if you pay annually, you have to have a minimum of two people to create a team, but then they give you ChatGPT4 and more on top of that, and it lists things that um, you would really want, but you have to have two to be a team. And, um, you know, there are there are so many platforms out there, and I, I like ChatGPT, I use Perplexity. Um, cast magic. There, there are just so many that do so many things. But ChatGPT is quite advanced and a good place to start in every case. And um, you won't go wrong if you start that way. Um, Stephanie. Yes. Um, can you tell us uh, some Discord communities and maybe Slacks we could join? And how do you organize? All of these different platforms and all the different things that they do. I mean, you may have one project, but you've got six different platforms you're working with. Is there a template for organizing this work? No. Um, I belong to um, Serial Marketers Slack, um, which addresses AI. I belong to a Discord called the Rise Community, which is really 
an incredible community run by Mark Schaefer. Um, there are, you know, I, I'm in the Mid Journey Discord community. I can't make heads or tails out of Mid Journey, frankly. Um, I use Microsoft Bing's Image Maker, which is free. Um, but, you know, everything I tell you now might be different next week. So how you keep it straight? I use Notion to keep it organized. That's that's what I use. It's my brain now. And, um, you know, where you used to use, uh, what's the one that um, you paid $144 a year for? Um, Evernote. And you don't need it anymore. This is so much better. You know, um, so, and Notion claims it will always be free, although there is a paid version. But, you know, how you keep organized, it's, I don't know, how do you organize the rest of your life? I, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> We don't. Yeah. So, yeah. We have time for one last question, if any, or comment. Avon. Um, so I just went into my chat GPT to, to see about upgrading, and I asked it, I asked it what the benefits would be for purchasing the Teams option. What did it say? And if the answer was, um, there isn't any such thing. There isn't what? It says, as of my last knowledge update, um, OpenAI had not introduced a specific concept called Teams for ChatGPT. So ChatGPT says there isn't one. And yet, <laughs> in, the, in the sidebar, when I went, or in the top, when I went to look at the upgrade, it's in the upgrade. You so, see, it's hallucinating. It is. It's very funny. It hasn't caught no, the up reason yet. For, the reason for that is that it is the way that it's trained. And this is an announcement from yesterday, but you would think whoever does the marketing for ChatGPT would have told the programmers, make sure that that's in there because <laughs> that's ridiculous. But um, that's a, it's a fabulous example. Thank you for that. It's funny. It was funny. Awesome. <laughs> well, I want to thank you all for coming. I'd like to give a round of applause for BL. Oh, I thought that was you. tremendous. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, for being here. Um, and we'll send you Biel's information. You can connect with her. I'm going to give her um, the list of everybody who uh, came here, if that's okay with you guys. Um, and I want you to connect. And I am going to share my slides with you. Um, uh, you will be getting those from Karen. Awesome. And, thank and, you. Um, very, very generous.